Hey boys and girls, oh god we have a Dobby. Special art guest Dobby. Hello mate, come on. Pops it doing our video. Sparks not you're not. Oh no, it's all chaos today. Right, a couple of things really for today's art. First is obviously my response to um rather surprisingly this week being about our fantasy uh obsessions, now, I am also a big fantasy fan, uh, to the point of it does permeate pretty much every level of my life. Um, I've built fantasy armor now. I'm going to do something unusual with today's up. I'm going to actually move the camera around, and you'll see why in a minute. <clears throat> so it might be a little bit long. Bear with. So, right, um, fantasy. Where does it start, really? Well, I suppose it started when I was a kid, obviously, and um, I was watching things like Dungeons and Dragons, and I saw the movie Crawl. Um, very, very old 80s movie with Todd Carty from EastEnders in it, playing some sort of squire of memory serves. So I have to rewatch it now. And it was, it, it, it fascinated me because of the main weapon used by the main protagonist. It was like a big throwing star that always came back to the hand of the owner. And that started off an obsession with fantasy weapons, uh, fantasy swords, and I saw things like Conan. Uh, Never Ending Story, Dark Crystal, all these sort of things all came along. And then of course Lord of the Rings. My first ever experience with Lord of the Rings was the um, animated movie which was never quite finished. Um, yeah, and actually if you ever meet Ryan in the flesh, ask him just how excited I got when I picked up the DVD of that for 50p brand new from Asda. I was like... <laughs> um, and so one day, my mum sort of seeing this vein in me, going out playing knights and shining armor with me mates, um, brought me an annual. Now, something from the 80s, all you whippersnappers of today won't, probably won't know about it, is these things called an annual. And magazines and comic strips of the time did something called an annual, which is a compilation of the best bits throughout the year in a hardback book. And I had the dandy ones, I had the Beano ones. Uh, a couple of others, as I got older, I had things like Viz annuals as well. But this particular one was a Golden Demon annual. And that started off a real obsession of my life, modelling. Now, I've been making models since I was five. And I was, you know, the usual sort of stuff, like German, British aircraft from the Second World War, uh, fighter jets, tanks, jeeps, all that sort of thing. I Name it, I've probably built it by name. But then my mum bought me this animal called the Golden Demon, Aussie, away from the tripod. And that set me off into the world of fantasy wargaming. And subsequently, um, I now have a dwarf army. I've had several armies throughout the years, ranging from a chaos army. Uh, yes, Ryan's going to kill me for saying this. I went to start a wood elf army. But then I saw the sense and um, sold it all. Got rid of them, pay last point here, bastards. Remember that phrase, I'll get back to it in a minute. So, um, as I grew older, I learned things like blacksmithing. And, uh, well, I'll show you. Okay, bear with me. Right. Now, we'll go, we pan around to here. Regular viewers of Shenanigans will recognise the helmet. I made that helmet. It's based around the riders of Rohan, as you can see there, proper metal. Um, my axe, fantasy weapon, this is actually a birthday present or Christmas present from the missus. And uh, proper metal, none of this fail latex stuff for me, being a role player. And this puppy. I made this. It's a naval bronze and copper sheath dagger. Um, I actually made that. Uh, I don't know if this will show up, but engraved it as well. So, you, as you can see, the fantasy aspect of things really is quite prevalent in my life, especially when I show you a little pile of things down here. I actually removed the camera from the tripod for this. As you can see, last night's dinner, and we've now got a nice little workbench going on here in the man cave. But, we'll see War Games, Warhammer Quest, Mordheim, Gorgamorta, some expansions, 
another one over here called Ragnarok. Where is it? There he is. And those cases behind there contain all my fantasy miniatures. And that's where they get built. Over there. And you see I'm working on a very special set of dwarfs there. I don't know if you get to see that. That's, uh, that will be Sock and Bomb eventually. So let's get this. I'm very sorry about the shaky camera. Here, a nice view of the helmet. Actually, I'll give you a funnel view of the helmet right there. There you go. Have a look at that. I built that. One of my crowning achievements. Again, I must apologise for the camera angle. Let's get the tripod. I've got special markings here for the tripod. And there we go. So, as you can see, fantasy for me is a very big thing. Um, very, very into it. I've been since I was a kid. I'm 35 this year. Every year I go through The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings trilogy. I've been reading Terry Pratchett since I was probably about 19. Um, and as Ryan said, I'm very big into Go Trek and Felix. Which segues nicely into who do I think is the best character ever written? Now, there's two that I want to mention here, and both are Warhammer. And why is that camera pissed? Oh, I see. I ain't gonna address it now. Now, the first one obviously is gonna be Gotrek. Gotrek is what is known as a slayer. Now, if a dwarf in Warhammer society really, really fucked up badly, commits a crime, or basically breaks his honour, he... well he does one of two things. Um, capital punishment, sorry corporal punishment, whichever the bad one is, or he becomes a slayer. Uh, when you become a slayer you literally lose everything. Identity, clothes, armour, shave your head to a little male walk, it's often dyed orange, and you carry an axe and you seek honourable doom. Now Go Trek is probably the I think it, it's it's a bit of a funny tag phrase that goes with him. He's either the best slayer in the world or he's the worst. The dude well the, the novels I've got run into twelve I think now. And every single time he just goes up against something and wins. The guy has taken down a chaos dragon, several demons Rat mods, um, scaven like rat ogres, like left, right, and centre. He just eats him up for lunch, and he's trying to die. But what makes him well written is this antagonistic, protagonistic approach that he has with some imperial effete poet that he met in um, one of the empire cities. I can't remember which. And he got drunk, and he started getting into a fight. And this fella called Felix uh, was the son of a rich burgomaster and got into a duel, accidentally killed somebody and was therefore hunted down by the Imperial Guard. Gotrick found it was like, no, nope, I'm going to save him, they got drunk and Felix decided to record the saga of his ultimate demise. So Q, a very good, almost Ryan and myself type um, relationship, crossing the old world and killing demons and shit. Um, now, one of my favourite lines from, and this is why I think Gojek is one of my two favourite best written characters, is um, from an audio play actually, um, because there's a couple of audio books now. One was called uh, Slayer of the Storm God, and the second one, I can't remember what it's called now, but it's just from the second one. And basically it's another chaos demon who inhabits he's, um, the ever-living, Curse of the Ever-Living, that's the one. And um, basically it's a demon that inhabits the body of a man and gives it superhuman demonic strength and everything. And Gotrip manages to kill the host but not the demon. And it starts killing his magical axe called the, the Starblade. Um, and basically it's, you know, it's a perfect world against chaos. But it comes back in its natural demonic magical form and they're in like this clearing and they're in a very cold sort of arctic way, it's just snow deep up to Buck Gotrek's chin, Felix's knee. Um, and this particular place is very warm, it's all green and lush and everything, it's quite wet and blood flowing off this demon. And 
basically Gotrek was starting to lose the fight and we're all going no no Gotrek can't die but he should but he can't die but he comes up from under this gore slicked mud and the line was like an exceptionally angry newborn Gotrek raised his axe cut off the demon's leg ran up his spine and severed his head simple but brilliantly written like a exceptionally angry newborn. The guy is a 200 year old dwarf. He's really fucking angry at anything that ain't dwarf or felix. And pretty much eviscerates it. And subsequently wins or fails, depending on your viewpoint, um, the fight with this particular demon. Now, the other um, character I thought was exceptionally well, uh, well written was from the history of Dwarven uh, Empires in a book called Honor Keeper and basically you've got a set of dwarves this is the prehistory of the dwarves, I can't remember the names but it sort of defines the schism, the beginning of the schism between dwarves and elves in the Warhammer universe and this particular king, he was very old dying even by dwarf standards and he had the one son and he had a second son who was horrifically disfigured and disabled I suppose somebody like cerebral palsy suffering eh? anyway the elves come along to return the body of the well son the able-bodied son or something like that and one tiny little misinterpretation um, ended up with this very practical pragmatic dwarf king looking at him and going looking at all these elves and shouting at the top of his voice get them pale arsed pointy eared bastards out of my kingdom and thus the split between the elves and the dwarves was pretty much created it's all very simple stuff, it's Warhammer it's all based around a tabletop um, massed uh, unit battle game but some of the history behind it is brilliant now th those are my two written favourite fantasy characters now, they're just characters, they're not a story. The stories that they come from are rich and deep and very, very, very good stories. Uh, Honor Keeper went off into a second book called Oathbreaker, and there was supposedly a third book of uh, Dwarven Grudge and Dwarven Law, basically the Book of Grudges. Unfortunately, that never got released, or it did in very limited runs, and I'm still trying to track a copy down. Um, but in sort of elements of just little snippets of pure literary genius those are my two favourites so let's wrap this up both myself and Ryan are massive fantasy fans and I am now asking for your input comments below, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, wherever you see this video comment below, let us know what you think um, who's your favourite written character from whatever series of fantasy Anybody mentions Twilight, seriously guys, get a life. Sparkly vampires. Next you'll be telling me the werewolves like a bronies, basically. Oh, <laughs> wait, one of them actually is. Moving on! Comments below, get involved. This is your platform as much as it is ours. If you want to be a guest starter, again, comment below, contact me via Jess page, my own personal profiles, whatever. Contact me, ask. Most I'll say is maybe. Um, and let us know. Now, question time. Ryan, favourite scene ever in any fantasy franchise, anything, anywhere, blah, 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 blah. Favourite scene ever. I will come back with my favourite scene after I hear Ryan's, because there's a few and I want to refresh myself. Some are books, some are films, some are games. For the time being, I'm the Fury. You lot, yeah, you're all right. We like you. We will kill you last. No, we won't. We love you. Peace.